what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here we're going to be talking about scream 7 in this video here today so as promised in my earlier video we got the news that i was anticipating to come out now we just need to wait for it to be confirmed from reputable trades in this day and the third like yesterday's news so we're back with more made-up stories today despite yesterday concluding with official scream 7 news dropping but yeah, on today's edition of Made Up Lies, reliable insider Daniel RPK circled the block again to let us know that Cassian Bilton will star in Scream 7 as Isabel May's on-screen boyfriend. Keep in mind, Isabel was announced yesterday and she will be starring as Sydney's daughter named Taylor or Tatum, a name that is still subject to change, just like the boyfriend's name. Taylor doesn't like how overprotective Sydney is and is ready to prove that she can stand on her own. Taylor has a boyfriend named Brian, so that's who Cassian Bilton is playing in Scream 7. Brian, as I mentioned before, isn't fully sold that Taylor wants to have sex with him as much as she's just trying to check a box to piss Sydney off. They've been dating for over a year and Taylor hasn't even bothered to say, I love you. Now, Cassian apparently is making a name for himself in this show called Foundation, but I've never watched a single episode of that. I think it comes on Prime. It appears he's also quite talented, so fingers crossed they both have great on-screen chemistry together. His social media presence is also quite small, just like Isabel. So it seems like they're going out of the way to make sure that whoever they are casting in it when it comes to the newbies aren't online and active as much. So that way the backlash or whatever comes their way doesn't bother them because it doesn't look like either one of these two use Instagram, even though they have Instagram accounts. I think Cassian has a Twitter. I didn't check to see how big that was, but he might not even be active there. Just to address the aging, because I know people are already saying, oh, he looks really old. I do get the frustration, but I also can't fully subscribe when Scream had 20-year-olds playing teens. We just recently had... We just recently, yeah, had 20-something-year-olds playing teens with Scream 5 and Scream 6. Like, the oldest one, obviously, was Melissa Barrera's Sam Carpenter, but her co-stars were actually close in age to her. Everyone except jenna jenna was the only real actual teen present everyone else was in their mid-20s if i'm not if i'm not mistaken so with that in mind there are a few teens who do look like they are 24 or older <laughs> that last one is just me poking fun at my friends if they're listening but yeah more age appropriate stars would be my preferred choices i just can't fully subscribe to this being nonsensical when they just did it with screen five and scream six and considering there are genuinely teens who look like they are 30 or a little bit under 30 they don't look their age <laughs> so it's just also a matter of who was was or wasn't willing to sign audition etc when it comes to who got the job who of those that audition gave a convincing enough performance i trust that brian won't be the killer in scream 7 as we just saw the boyfriend angle in scream 5 give me a few more years or don't bother before we go down that well again as for the theories about taylor dying in the opening i don't see that happening due to reverse bedroom scene being between her and brian that sydney is supposed to interrupt seemingly being placed somewhere in the middle of the film if not right after the opening kill sequence taylor dying midway though could work but it just crushes me already to think about because we do need stakes like this since Sydney's arc is just lost on so many. She's supposed to be in a new arc of her life, which is the peace arc. Doesn't mean I need to see that on screen. If they need if they wanted to do some type of soap opera spinoff, exploring the life of a mother with Sydney Prescott in the center, that could have been something they could have done down the road. Those who would have wanted to watch that would have watched. I wouldn't have watched, but I just think that Sydney's new arc right now is the peace arc and i don't need to see turmoil on my screen all the time with this character but you know what some people are gonna have to learn the hard way if they decide, if they decide one day to kill this character i hope you guys realize nev campbell cannot stop them from doing that nev campbell simply can just say i'm not going to portray that on screen i don't want to do that but she does not own the character and if they want to kill sydney at some point this could have been avoided if we would have just let sydney rest in peace and she can't stop them whatever Taylor has a lot of plot armor already, I'm not going to lie, so stripping her of it would add stakes to the narrative. Just don't kill the daughter before I even get to know her. That's why I'm saying if they do a midway kill, I could get down with that. I just need to see something that lets me get attached to Taylor, lets me get invested in Sydney's bond with Taylor, and then you can shatter and break my heart. And yes, it would give some type of motivation towards Sydney, similar to what we saw in Screen 5, instead of trying to help track down who killed a, a brother like character in dewey she's now trying to track down who killed her legitimate daughter in taylor 
something I could get behind. She has another child, so it wouldn't be too heartbreaking. But the fact that I even have to talk about it like that just sounds so evil. Well, you have another daughter, so it's not the complete end of the world. In reality, none of her children should be dying. <laughs> it's really unfortunate. And if Mark dies, I mean, oh, so well, oh, well, be it. It's just so unfortunate that this is the mindset I have to be in because of the fact that you can't just give me the same old song and dance because then by the end of it, I'm going to be like, oh, well, what was the point of that? There were no stakes. Nobody was ever made to feel in jeopardy. You didn't kill anyone significant or close to Sydney. And the fact of the matter is, if you're going to put her back in the hot seat, you're going to have to take some swings that otherwise would be considered unnecessary because of the fact that we are content or hell bent on moving backwards instead of moving forwards yes you lost melissa barrera but like i've stated what you should have done is created a brand new protagonist or done a completely new story with again all new characters set in the same world and yeah that's what you could have done but no we went back to nev campbell and sydney prescott whatever just to address the time jump concerns daniel rpk reported on this months ago so this is not new and it's all starting to come together nicely the most logical way to explain this is that sydney must have had taylor shortly after the events of scream 4 and scream 7 is five to seven years after the events of scream 6 that's the only thing i can see making it make sense as to how her daughter is older now although i know some people are going to be thinking if they gave her a daughter that was present in screen four why didn't they talk about said daughter the only logical thing i can tell myself is that gail and dewey and sydney knew that she had a daughter so they didn't really need to talk about it too much and if mark wasn't in the picture at the time maybe they had a had a fling and that's where the child came from if her and mark weren't together at the time maybe that's why mark wasn't mentioned there's just so many ways they can explain it away it really isn't necessary that they mention the daughter. And it's quite obvious the reason why the daughter wasn't mentioned because there was no thought of a daughter. The daughter is a brand new thought. And the fact that you're aging her up is due to the fact that you decided to do a time jump. So they're going to find a way to make it work. The, the retcons and stuff like that, it's not new. People will try to excuse other retcons because they like them and then dismiss other retcons because they don't like them. But retcons are not new. Scream has been doing retcons since Scream 3. It's nothing new. They're going to keep on doing it for the sake of the story and whatever they want to get told on screen. So, yeah, we'll see what comes of that. But let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and never miss a video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.